Okay, uh, welcome everyone to this uh, edition of Polygon UK webinar. Um, today we have a great pleasure of uh, having Maria Petrova from Popeu Fabra. Uh, the title of the talk is Have Online Networks Undermined Local Communities? Evidence from Facebook. This is joint work with Ruben Enikulopov, uh, Gianluca Russo, and David Yanagizawa Drops. Um, as a reminder, in two weeks, we do not have uh, our usual seminar because it's a bank holiday in the UK, it's a coronation weekend, uh, but in the next session on the 22nd of May, we will have Sasha Becker from Monash and Warwick uh, presenting from the death of God to the rise of Hitler. Um, okay, um, we are ready to start. Maria, you have one hour, uh, including Q&A. So the Q&A session is, by the way, Q&A session is at the end, uh, ten, last 10 minutes of the of, of, of one hour slot. But uh, to all, everyone, the chat is going to be open. But if you have any uh, clarifying questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and, uh, and ask question live. Thank you, Maria. Now the time is, uh, the floor is yours. Okay, so thanks a lot for inviting me to this uh, uh, wonderful uh, opportunity, uh, especially as it does not require visas to come to your UK. People with Russian, uh, for people with Russian passports is still an issue. Yes, uh, the motivation for this talk tries, uh, comes from trying to understand uh, the role of internet and more recently social media in social interactions. Initially, when internet uh, emerged, uh, people like scholars have been discussing that, uh, oh, like now new great opportunities emerge, it's going to be the death of distance, and we are all going to live in a global village. Uh, but uh, there were also some critics who said that, oh, but it, may, it is maybe too optimistic. And in fact, uh, what internet and later social media could do is to create some sort of echo chambers to, to divide rather than to unite. And what happens in reality? Well, there is still not much uh, findings about it, but part of this is that network structure could be an important determinant of uh, what's going on. So what we would like uh, to answer in this paper is what happens if we can randomize exposure to different types of communities so that sample communities, they end up with being connected to like-minded ones and others being connected to different minded ones. So what uh, we are going to do in this paper, we are going to study a causal impact of online homophily or homophily of online connections. And we are going to look at the patterns of uh, different kinds of communications like online and offline. We are going to look at social capital and finally the distribution of political preferences. So of course, as, as it is typical with social media, uh, there are some empirical problems with how you can do it. So first we need to get the data on out of counties, friendship links in social media. And what we are going to do is to use the universe of county to county Facebook links in the United States. Second, we need to create a measure of online homophily. And what we are going to do, we introduce a new measure of online homophily based on social distance between counties and their Facebook links. And last but not least, 
uh, as you could guess, uh, we need identification. Uh, when people start using social media, almost everything becomes endogenous, and especially such thing as homophily. And uh, what we do, we are going to use a conflict between Google and Facebook about the reciprocal data sharing. And we are going to use uh, a change introduced by the change in policy uh, as a result of this conflict and combine it with the data on the popularity of different emails. And I will be more specific about it. Okay, uh, just to give you some preview of the results. Uh, first, we find that uh, exposure to like-minded networks leads to, led to some change in the patterns of interactions, person-to-person -person interaction. Uh, so if people get connected to um, online, to similar like-minded communities, then they like their Facebook feed, they use Facebook more often, they use other social media less often, but it also led to some other change in some other type of interactions, such as offline interactions that we measure as attendance of bars and uh, decrease in social capital. But finally, we also try to understand how this change uh, play out in the um, change in voting behavior. And we see that uh, we observe high dispersion of political preferences within counties and lower dispersion across counties. And uh, the implication of our result is that uh, if you take a natural demand for homophily uh, that humans have, uh, if you want uh, that uh, people want to get uh, to communicate with like-minded people, and you uh, combine it with some technology, which allows uh, some sort of a depth of distance technology that could lead to the decline of local social capital. Okay, so let me skip literature in the interest of time. Just uh, there is <laughs> emerging and super growing, uh, super fastly growing literature on social media, homophily and so on. And what we do, our contribution here is to study the causal impact of network structure rather than the presence or absence of social media and in particular homophily in this network structure. Okay, so the data. Uh, we use Facebook data coming from social connectivity index. Uh, Facebook shared some of its data with the researcher and we use the data on the universe of all county to county connections in two points in time, 2016 and 2020. So we measure relative popularity of different emails by looking by using Google search index. And then we use Gallup to measure ideology. We take browsing data from Comscore. We take geographic mobility data from SafeGraph. Social capital data is inferred from, uh, we take from Chitty. And yes, the rest is standard, I guess. Okay. Let me try to, like what you can see in this slide, for example, is a visualization of the relative probability that somebody in any county in the US has a friendship link to Cook County, Illinois. And we can try to look at it just by browsing the whole map and you can see that we can repeat it for any county in the United States. 
And what you can see is that for some counties in the United States, their friendship links are very geographically concentrated, while some other counties, they have friends all over the place. And sometimes they have friends in some weird uh, like places for which it, there is no obvious reason why somebody in this county should have a friend in another county. Okay. So what we do with this data? We create a measure of online social similarity or online homophily. How we do it, we take this Facebook links that we, I just showed to you, and we combine it with a measure of social similarity, which is based on uh, principal component of the distance uh, in between counties in such dimensions as demographics, voting, and ideology. And then we weight this social similarity by Facebook links. And as a result, we get a measure of online homophily, which is if uh, my county is very similar to your county, but we don't have Facebook links, it will be still zero. But if uh, even if my county is different from your county, but we have a lot of friends, so that means that uh, like our differences would be weighted by our numbers of friends. Can I ask a, a yes. question here, because I didn't catch that. Is there a geographical proximity um, uh, included in that similarity? Is that is that what is a part no. of it? No, we don't include geographic proximity. Uh, but uh, like uh, what we can do, we can try to limit uh, the number as we proceed, we can try to limit the number of friends to only closely related uh, like to counties which are geographically close and that we can still do. Uh, in fact, because most of Facebook connections are still geographically close, uh, they would be part of the spies. Uh, so this uh, Facebook connections are well correlated with geographic similarities. Okay, so this is how our homophily index looks like. And as you can see, there is quite a bit of variation. Uh, and it doesn't seem to be a particular pattern that says that, oh, like maybe East Coast is substantially different from the South. We're always going to look at things within the, within the state and compare counties within, similar, within the same state. Okay, so, but as you could guess, nevertheless, uh, here both friendship links and social distance or social similarity, both of these uh, characteristics, uh, they actually, they depend on county's characteristics, right? So this is a clearly an endogenous variable. So we need to have some source of exogenous variation. And this is what we do. Uh, we use the fact that in November 2010, there was a conflict between Google and Facebook, which uh, did not allow uh, Gmail users to continue to automatically import their contacts to Facebook. So probably you don't understand what I'm talking about, but some of you who are young and who are old enough to remember how Facebook looked like in those early years. Uh, uh, in those early years, when a new user was joining Facebook, uh, the 
program allowed you to quickly find some of the friends. And uh, the way it worked is that they allowed, uh, they asked for your email, for your password, and then uh, the system tells you who of your contacts are already on Facebook, and then you can connect or not. So, and before November 2010, you could do it with any email client, but after 2000, November 2010, you could do it with Yahoo, with Hotmail, but not Gmail. And Yahoo and Hotmail were other very popular email clients during that time. And you can see at the bottom of the slide that the average evolution of popularity of Yahoo, Gmail, and Hotmail, which of the clients was the most popular in every particular county. Moreover, if we look at uh, email popularity, average email popularity, uh, it, it so happened that just at the time of this policy change, uh, they were uh, like Yahoo, Hotmail, and Gmail, they were approximately equally popular all over the United States. So initially everybody was using Hotmail, then eventually everybody uses uh, Gmail, and in the middle Yahoo Mail became more or less popular. Okay, so, and now what we do is uh, we are trying to show that this shock indeed mattered. So we look at uh, the timing of the policy change and we see whether the number of bilateral links, Facebook links between county I and county J actually depended on the Gmail complementarity, which is the relative popularity of Gmail in county I and county J relative to other clients. And what you can see is that before the policy change, uh, there was no substantial difference uh, in Gmail complementarity that would generate increase in the number of these links. If anything, this coefficient is positive. But after policy change, you can see that uh, a drop, a uh, clear decline in this coefficient. And again, what we do here, this, what you can see in this picture is a coefficient from the set of different regressions. We always have Facebook links between county I and county J, we fix it at the moment of uh, time 2016, because that's our data restriction. But then we see how relative Gmail complementarities between county I and J in the moment of time T affected uh, this future Facebook links. And you can see that indeed there is a decline after this policy change in the number of uh, eventual Facebook links in counties which use Gmail just before and just after policy change. Okay, so uh, now, then uh, what we are using, uh, we are constructing a sort of a, a measure of uh, a source of exogenous variation. Or we want to construct an instrument based on these numbers. So first of all, we've, we use the fact that uh, this, uh, this policy should only matter between November 2010 and April 2012. Why? Because in April 2012, uh, Facebook uh, stopped using friend suggestion tool. So the, the 
the shock introduced by this policy stopped the work. Of course, there could still be some differences inherited because uh, of um, network uh, complementarities, uh, but yes. Uh, then uh, for every county, I we compute uh, Gmail complementarity for more similar and more distant counties separately for uh, places which are high in terms of uh, online sim similarity and places which are low in terms of social similarity. And then we look at the difference in Gmail complementarity during six quarters after the policy change and six quarters before the policy change, right? So, uh, and we look at whether as a result, uh, some counties, they got connected to more like-minded counties and other counties got connected to more different-minded counties. So here, if something is not clear, just uh, just ask me because uh, I mean, like, otherwise it would be difficult to understand the rest of the talk. So here, for example, what you can see, uh, uh, we take a blount particular counties, which is Blount County, Alabama. And we look at uh, Gmail complementarity shock uh, uh, between Blount County and all other counties in the United States. And uh, for counties which are uh, yellow, it would be more difficult uh, for them to find friends because they are high in Gmail complementarity after the shock. Or oh, in, in some other counties, it was easy to find friends, maybe because they have uh, high Gmail complementarity already before the shock or because they lo had low complementarity in six quarters after the shock. Okay. Uh, oops. Uh, sorry. Uh, whew, something happened <laughs> finally with the slides after three years of Zoom. Something happened to my slides, but uh, uh, I I hope that you can see uh, this picture with two bars here, and uh, then I'll tell you about this picture. So we are still in Blount County, Alabama, and we compute Gmail complementarity with a high average for high uh, social distance county and, and average for low social distance counties. Okay, let me try to be back uh, to Blount County, Alabama. And uh, yes, uh, you could see that there is uh, like for, in particular for Blount County, Alabama, there was a, a change in uh, online social, uh, uh, like it was easier for them to find friends in different minded counties. So as a result, they ended up with having more Facebook friends in different minded counties as compared with like-minded counties. Uh, okay, so, and then if we re see, uh, repeat it uh, many times for every county in the United States, then in the end we get a homophily shock our Gmail complementarity homophily shock. And yes, uh, so here you can see that there is quite a bit of variation within most of states that we are looking at. And this is a residual variation after taking into account demographics, demographic trends, resistant politics, and so on. Okay, so this was Blount County. 
Okay. So, and uh, we also try to do some balance tests. So if we don't include controls, then we see quite a bit of differences. But once we start to include controls, especially political, pre-existing pre political and demographics, then these things become much more uh, centered, much, more, much closer to each other. Okay, so now this table that you are seeing here is essentially a um, implied first stage. So what is the first stage? We put our uh, endogenous measure of online homophily on the left-hand side and our Gmail complementarity homophily shock on the right-hand side. And you can see that places which were pushed towards having uh, higher levels of online homophily because of this Google and Facebook conflict, uh, they ended up with having higher homophily of their online links. Just a um, quick question, sorry, um, yeah, yeah. clarification. Yes. Um, so I just wanted to understand a little bit better so, because I haven't followed the, the details of all the, the measures, but most of the variation seems to come from between counties, right? So I was just wondering how you can account for the homophily that comes from within county friendships and like the weight of that. So if you're in a county where most relationships are within the county rather than between the county, how is that taken into account? Oh, we don't have... Uh within county friendships, I think. But even if they, we would have it, we would not use it. Because uh, we want to understand essentially, like, uh, because the, uh, uh, we measure the differences, we weight the differences by their Facebook links, right? Mm -hmm. So, and as a result, if some counties, they don't have a lot of Facebook links, then this weight for Facebook link, it would be small. So, so I guess uh, this is the answer. But when we, if you want to say that it's relevant when we construct our instrument, uh, when we construct our instrument, we always compare high versus low and pre versus post. So eventually every county ended up with using Gmail most often. Event uh, initially every county was using Hotmail, but then things are about the timing, the relative timing of having uh, uh, Gmail or Hotmail a little bit before, a little bit after, and towards uh, like-minded and different-minded. So let me try to see if I can show you some other. Oh. I wanted to show you some other uh, picture, but for some reason today, they're super slow on my computer. It's fine, thanks. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> I'm not even sure why. Uh, well, that means that, do you see my circle? No, I don't see the balance test. Oh, yes, <laughs> because what I see is a circle, <laughs> because okay. I cannot move away from this slide. Okay, uh, so, uh, okay, let me not try to find you. Uh, the picture that I wanted to show you, I ho very much hope it will be in the draft that we really want to finish in the next three weeks. Uh, but Andres, who is not here, he knows that I, I told him the same two months ago. <laughs> so, but I still hope to finish this draft in the next three weeks. Okay, so uh, the table that I, oh, okay. 
Stop sharing. Again, I do it like here. Um, so I showed you the picture with the first stage. Uh, the next table uh, was supposed to be to look at the COM score. Uh, COM score is a data set. I, I'm just trying to tell you while my computer is thinking. Uh, and uh, we can actually see your slides, just so you know. Oh, uh, so we can actually see your slides right now. I don't know if you know it on, on your end, but you've shared and we can see your slides. You can see my slides. Yeah, but I, I, I cannot move them because I okay. have this. Uh... Okay, good. This is just... Wheel. Yes. Okay. Okay. Got it. So no more trying to, <laughs> to show you this uh, like pictures we don't want to be shown. Okay. So what we do with ComScore? ComScore is a large data set uh, with uh, tens of thousands of respondents in the United States, which allows uh, researchers and marketing professionals to follow their internet visits uh, to Facebook, other social media, but also to Google, to particular websites, and so on. And what we uh, did with this ComScore data, we tried to understand how this homophily show translated into uh, different patterns of behavior. And you can see that uh, there is a positive effect of our homophily show on the number of visits to Facebook and negative effect the number of visits to other social media. And um, we think that this implies that indeed people love homophily. If they like their Facebook feed, then they try to spend more time on Facebook. And as a result, they also spend less time on other social media. So uh, now, Next, what we did, we tried to look at the patterns of offline communications. And the data that came handy here is uh, uh, safe graph data that people used a lot during the pandemics to see who stayed at home, who still like went to some places. But we used 2019 version of this data and we look at visits to bars and restaurants. So, and visits to bars, uh, pe people often go to bars to do some offline communication, to meet with friends, to meet with coworkers and other things. I guess that uh, you in the UK, you shouldn't have issues with this. Uh, Okay, and what you can see is that we also observe some negative effect of um, online homophily on the number of bar visits, which is people enjoy their communications online uh, they get hooked by Facebook because uh, Facebook managed to offer very good friendship feed to these people. And as a result, they go to bars marginally less often. So now uh, what we also want to do, we want to study how this uh, homophily shock affected some other uh, variables. Ideally, we want to look at social capital, and uh, uh, but it's not available with the pre high enough precision. So we ended up with using uh, uh, economic connectedness or economic social capital measure from Raj Chetty and co-authors who essentially measure how, what's the average number of connectedness in Facebook across uh, online connectedness across income strata. 
not only online, offline. Yes, uh, so which is, uh, what is the probability that people with high income befriend people with low income? And what you can see here is that in places in which this Gmail homophily shock was higher, we observe lower level of economic connectedness, which is people are less likely to form friendships across incomes, different levels of incomes. So they are more likely, high income people are more likely to hang out with high income people, low income people stay with low income people. So, uh, Just a, a quick question. On, yeah. on the interpretation of this. So, so you're less likely to form connections with people of different yeah. uh, income level. So given the, you say like with the previous results saying that uh, we see a substitution of online and offline, is that saying that online spaces are kind of more segregated um, than like bars, you know, you know, or any other kind of real life space? where people make connections? Uh, so uh, we, like, uh, we don't want to say that they are necessarily more or less segregated uh, because we always, our homophily shock is always about comparison of being connected. It's not about, you know, like, uh, just having Facebook and not having Facebook. It's about having connections to like-minded counties versus different-minded counties. If you end up with having uh, connections with like-minded counties, then you are going to have a lower level of economic connectedness. But from a particular starting point and uh, like we, we talk about change, so we don't talk about levels as com in comparison. It could still be the case that on average, uh, uh, friendships are more segregated uh, as compared with um, on, uh, offline, as compared with online. But still, we can see that if you get connected uh, online, to more like like-minded people, then you are staying, you are spending more time. And maybe it's also about the nature of uh, like bar communications because bars are like, uh, uh, in bars you can indeed meet people like who are still from the same place as you are coming from. But at the same time, they're not necessarily your close friends. Okay, so, and now let me tell you some words uh, about the political uh, consequences of online homophily. So, but before I begin, uh, let me, um, tell you a couple of words about how online homophily can be related to political preferences. And uh, for example, one story, which is an echo chamber story says that, oh, like uh, if you get exposed to like-minded communities, it can lead to polarization because you get uh, your point of view confirmed, you are becoming more and more extreme. And as a result, uh, you, get, you are converging to extreme ideal points. And we should expect convergence of local preferences, either to one extreme or to another. And there is a different story that says that, oh, but people who get exposed to, uh, more homogeneous networks, uh, they have less, they interact less within local communities and they interact more online. And as a result, it could lead to divergence of preferences within counties because now like everybody gets political information from the internet rather than from their neighbors. 
And this uh, two stories, they suggest the opposite predictions. And what we are going to do next is to test uh, what happens in reality. And here, for example, you can see uh, uh, a measure of political homogeneity, which is constructed in the same way as uh, ethno-linguistic fractionalization. It's just a probability that two randomly picked voters from the same county, they are going to vote uh, for uh, the same party. So uh, as you can see on this graph, there is, uh, uh, you can see that uh, the lowest level of political homogeneity is for 50-50 counties and the highest are at the extreme. And this political homogeneity is inversely related to vote margins and extreme voting. So, uh, this is how Gmail homophily is related to political homogeneity. Uh, and a good thing about uh, uh, political results is that here we can look at possibility of pre-trends because for same graph data, we don't have data before Facebook. For like uh, Comscore data, we obviously don't have data on Facebook visits before Facebook was created and before the policy. So, but here uh, you can see that there is no uh, significant relationship between our Gmail homophily show and political preferences before policy change, before 2010. And actually we still don't see uh, important effect in 2012 as well, possibly because people are still, not that many people were still on Facebook. People still didn't get that much information on uh, political information from social media. But in 2016 and 2020, you can see significant negative relationship. And what does it mean? It's consistent with our second interpretation, second story that people stop interacting locally, they don't uh, go to bars. They don't uh, connect uh, to different to people with different incomes. They stay online, and as a result, their voting behavior within county is different from each other. And local political homogeneity is smaller. Can I so, ask you? Uh, yeah. about this data tr sort of trend uh, over time. Uh, this is only about Facebook. Mm -hmm. right? So so there is a story that, you know, Facebook in 2004 or 8 is not the same as in 2020. Um, on the other hand, in, if we compare this to general online engagement, not Facebook, there's self-selection in Facebook, there's a generational shift. Have you thought about this? What, um, I, what I mean is that in 2020, Facebook is, is used by, you know, by a different population than, than say, in 2008. Uh, yes. Uh, what is important for us, I think, is that uh, uh, is uh, that uh, uh, here we look at the consequences of this homophily shock is that at this initial stage of Facebook development, this certain friendship links were formed and not or not formed. And those are marginal links, right? So if I am very big friend with you, I will get connected regardless of whether you are on my contact list. But my high school friend, I can get marginal connection easily through this thing. So it's true that uh, it could be like important for the interpretation, but 
again, like here, our Gemol homophily show is time invariant because we always look six quarters before and six quarters after the policy change. Right, and then we look at what happens before policy chain, policy shock, and after policy shock. And I think that uh, uh, regardless of what Facebook meant for people in 2008, uh, this future policy shock was not supposed to affect, you know, like uh, uh, people's interactions in 2008 because it did not happen yet. Okay, so here is just the same results in table format. You can see that this coefficient is pretty stable once uh, we control for uh, the population and some baseline controls. And after that, the sign remains similar and the magnitude does not change that much. And uh, yes, the IV estimation allows us to put some number on like uh, whether, and our results imply that I think, let me try to see if I have it here. No, I don't have it here. Approximately, uh, uh, that uh, one standard deviation in online homophily approximately led to 25% uh, 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 change in local political homogeneity. Okay, so if you don't like political homogeneity, we can see similar results with vote margins and vote margins are essentially just like you can see that vote margins are becoming smaller and smaller in places with higher levels of uh, Gmail complementarity shock. So now we can also look at within county voting uh, behavior uh, and in particular on uh, precinct level voting. And then we can compute things like standard deviation of precinct level voting or interquartile range. And you can see that uh, like all of these results are consistent with this basic idea that uh, in places with higher uh, levels of homophily shock or online homophily, we observe uh, more dispersion of within county voting. Okay, so we can also try to see whether this uh, online homophily benefited particular county and we did not find any significant effect in uh, the last three columns the most saturated specifications you can see that the coefficient even changed its sign and there is and the coefficient is much smaller than its standard error so it's we did not find that our measure of uh, homophily shock benefited uh, some uh, party in particular. We also look at that the turnout because, well, it's uh, important for the interpretation of the results. And uh, again, we did not find significant effects on turnout in the most saturated specifications. Okay. Okay, so I think I'm good on time, even despite this negative, uh, this uh, technical issues. So what we did in this paper, we uh, studied the impact of online homophily on interpersonal interactions. 
and we use conflict between Google and Facebook uh, as a policy change uh, that created shock to Facebook links for different counties in the US. And we find that higher homophily led to uh, more like focus on Facebook, more high usage of Facebook, less visits to other social media, less going uh, to the bus, low levels of social capitals, and high dispersion of within county political preferences. So our results indeed uh, uh, suggest that uh, this demand for homophily together with the depth of distance social media technology uh, led to decline in local communities. So I stop here and I'll be happy to answer any remaining questions. Uh, thank you very much. Excellent. So we, we are very good on time. Um, so if there are any questions, uh, just, just please go ahead and mute yourself and, and fire away. Uh, Valeria, is it a clapping hand or is it a raised hand? I was clapping. Ah, we, had, so we used to clap, yeah. yeah. My clapping as well. Yeah. Um, but in terms of uh, questions. We don't have any <laughs> questions right now. Um, I do everything was clear or everything was so unclear. <laughs> no, I, I think everything was clear. I'm speaking for myself, you know, but of course uh, there, there's uh, layers that probably people can, can ask. So in any case, if, if there is any, anyone uh, uh, with a question, please go ahead. I, I can I have one, one clarification. At a certain point you had a political this graph, um, the U-shaped graph uh, with, the, with the political on the horizontal, sorry, was it vo votes for Republicans on the horizontal axis? Homogeneity, political homogeneity measure. Yes, so sorry, uh, what I didn't understand is why was it so smooth? What, you know, in what, why, why is, is it, sorry, is it based on data in No, what, no. I didn't it's understand that graph. Oh, it's it's just like uh, to show that uh, like uh, the formula that we are using. Ah, okay. okay yes, okay, okay. because it's not a standard measure that people use uh, because normally people don't look at dispersion of within political preferences. So just to, it's just to illustrate uh, the measure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought it was based. Okay, I thought it was based on on, on some specific data. Um, I think I had a, a question on like measures of erosions of local communities, if you want like a more formal question. And I was wondering, so this is something that's come out right in the deep and depths of despair things, like looking at marriage rates. Do we observe anything of, of that? If people are marrying less, seeing each other less and like kind of forming less of, you know, households. Um, as a proof of that, there is that erosion in local communities. Mm. Oh well, we wanted to look at marriages, but in particular at intermarriages. Uh, but I believe that we still don't have the data, and I'm not one hundred percent sure that it's easy to get. Like you know, because I believe that. Uh, you can only get it from census, decennial census. So I am not even, yeah, I should know it better what happened to American census in 2020. Uh, probably it was done online. So, and uh, yes, maybe it's not as uh, straightforward as uh, it seems. <laughs> But we are thinking about it, and thanks for thanks yeah. for this question because um, because that's a good reminder that we should find. I, I think my question was a bit simpler, actually. So it's more about marriages forming at all, not even between communities. So just you get an idea that people are actually getting married, uh, and that you know I think it's data that's a bit more straightforward. 
uh, to find? Uh, so the but the thing is that people might be getting married or not getting married, but still having a relationship, right? So, but nevertheless, we should look at it and to see because if we observe some, uh, there is a paper, for example, by Eliana LaFerrara and her co-author uh, on, you know, the blog posts in Palestine that uh, as a result of these blog posts, uh, people started to uh, like uh, communicate more within their like uh, village. And as a result, they have much less villages, uh, marriages across villages and which uh, in principle could lead to bad implica genetic implications. So, but yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I take your point. That's uh, that's very good point. Thanks. Uh, uh, any other questions? Don't be shy, because if uh, if there are no other questions, I'm going to officially declare the uh, the end of the, of the official part of the seminar. So Apurav, if you can stop um, the recording. Thank you, Maria, for the great presentation.